Hi everybody, Rachel here from RatesTheStamper.com and thanks for joining me again for another Friday Fast to Fabulous card series. So today we're going to concentrate on making four masculine style cards. We're going to use Whiskey Business. We're also going to use, I believe this is the Old World Map 3D embossing folder. I apologize if I am saying that incorrectly, but for some reason my brain is fogging. And then we also have the coordinating memories and more cards. So I figured this would be fun because I'm sure some of you might have this around because maybe you bought the whole suite. Cool part about this is it has a lot of paper that already has foil accents to it. And these are actually a brass foil. So these can be used with gold. They do coordinate pretty well with gold just in case you weren't sure. Also has some stickers in it and then they have two different size cards. They have the smaller cards and they have two of each and then they have larger cards. Same thing, two of each and they are double sided. They have some really cool prints. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do today. We're also going to use the stitched shapes framelits dies, specifically the largest oval and then we are also using the oval, oval layering dies not circles the, oval, the layering oval dies tongue twister this morning okay so to get started I kind of have a lot of stuff mounted and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, a few hopefully techniques that maybe you haven't done before so we always start with our easiest card for all of our bases we're going to use early espresso so these are all four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half so I'm just going to crease this so this will be our first card. Now I was kind of debating, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, if I wanted to do espresso or suede. And to be quite honest with you, I'm still not 100% sure what I want to do for that. But I am going to stamp my um, snifter bottle. I guess this is a, is it a snifter bottle? It's just a really beautiful, it's a decanter. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm going to do my decanter. And what I want to do first is I actually want to see and I'm going to stamp this by doing it on the back, which sometimes is a good way to test something out. So I am using thick, very vanilla. I'm going to stamp this. And I think that's kind of nice enough. I like it. I don't think it needs to be any darker. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. And once again, I'm going to ink up my stamp. And I'm going to stamp this onto my oval. Kind of centered for the most part. So that looks pretty good. So we're going to let that set just for a moment. And then the other thing what we're going to do is we're going to just stamp and this is just from trimming my cardstock down. I have some little scraps so I'm just going to do cheers to you. So same thing again. I'm stamping that in the soft suede. And I'm going to put this to the side. Kind of putting that for the most part mostly centered. There's a little bit of a whoopsie there. Let's see. Oh there's a piece of something stuck on it. Not in my immaculate craft room. I can't even believe that. I'm going to try it one more time. Cheers to you. That's much better. Okay. So I'm going to wipe this off just in case I decide to use this again so I don't have any accidents. So I'm going to set this on the side as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp my whiskey glasses and then my little twist of lemon. And I'm just going to stamp these all over. So I am going to start with the bigger image, which will be the whiskey glass. And we're saying it's whiskey. It could really be anything. You can see I'm stamping all directions, turning your paper as you go. All right, we're going to leave that there, and then I'm going to bring in my twist. Some of them are going to be off. Some of them are going to be centered. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to close this up. Now, I wasn't originally going to do this, but I'm going to tell you what I was going to do, or I should say what I'm going to do anyway. Just want to wipe this off. I'm actually going to bring in something, and I hadn't thought about this ahead of time, but I think it might be a cool idea. So I have a blender pen. Now with your blender pens, you want to make sure that you always clean them off. And when you rub them on your finger, you should still see a little bit of liquid. If not, they're not really too expensive. You do get three in a pack. You could certainly afford to grab yourself another pack. But what I'm going to do, just to give a little teeny depth to this, is I'm going to actually just very lightly color and I'm only taking the ink that is from the stamp, so I'm not adding any extra. And I'm just kind of coloring in just so the bottom has a little bit of dimension that there actually is something in this decanter. Just like that. So I don't want any more than that. I'm just 
just doing it on the bottom part. And then one more thing I'm going to do because, you know, I like to add a little something extra is I'm going to take my early espresso pad and I have a sponge and I'm just going to very lightly sponge the edge of my oval. Okay, and I'm going to set this on the side because we're probably going to use that again. Now, what I'm going to do is just adhere this directly down. So I'm going to put some liquid glue on the back. I'm going to stick this down. You're definitely going to also need a Whisper White, or sorry, a very vanilla panel for the inside. If you wanted to do this in Whisper White, you certainly could, but you just want to make sure that if you use vanilla on the front, that you use vanilla on the inside as well, okay? So we have that. And then I'm going to take my Cheers to You. I'm just going to trim this. And I'm going to flag the end. Now you could do this with your banner triple punch if you wanted to, but a lot of times I'll just do it with scissors. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to sponge the edge because there's not really a whole lot to this card. So we're just going to give it just a little bit of something where we can. Okay, I'll get this out of the way. All right, and then we're going to take our oval and we're going to just add this right onto it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use some dimensionals. Oh my goodness gracious, please don't tell me. That's the one thing I forgot to grab is dimensionals. Good gravy. Okay, so I'm going to use dark dimensionals and I always tell you guys not to. It is on um, thick, very vanilla, so it's not likely to show through quite as much, but oh lordy, do I despise these tiny dimensionals until I actually need them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put a couple here and here. Well, one good thing, I shouldn't have any small dimensionals left when we're finished with this. All right, so I'm going to pop these off. Oh, man, these dimensionals. I have all of my uh, crafting stuff packed up for my card class tonight or else I would go and dig them out. But my luck if I move them, I just may forget. So I'm going to just set that there gently. And the reason I say gently is because I want to just make sure that I like the placement of the sentiment before I really push it down. One other thing you can do if you want to um, have a little bit of mobility is you can actually put a little bit of liquid glue onto the back of your dimensionals and it'll give you the ability to be able to move them around. So I feel like I kind of wanted to move this one off. I wonder if it's going to, nope, not going to let me. That's okay. We're just going to work with it. So normally what I would have done is I would have skipped the dimensionals on this part and kind of let this stick off to the side. And I could do that, but I'm just going to need to add another layer of dimensionals on this side. And I just don't want to put you guys through that torture. So there will be card one. So pretty simple. One other thing I'm going to add to this, just because it'll give a better illusion of the glass, is I'm just going to add a little bit of Wink of Stella you could do, or Shimmer Pen, depending on what you have, to the glass. And it'll kind of give you that glittery look to it, so it looks like a sparkly liquid. Okay, if you wanted to go a little bit more above and beyond, you could even fill in the, the colors in the background. You could do the same thing with the glass, but this is card one, so we don't want to get too crazy ahead of ourselves. So let me clean off my stamps, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing with our second card. So there's card one. Now card two, what we're going to do is we are actually going to add just a little bit of something else to it. So I have a stitched oval instead. I still have my other base card here. So I'm going to go ahead and start by stamping that. So I'm going to just stamp this all over the background. Same thing. Random pattern. Looks pretty good. Then we're going to do our twist. Okay, so we're gonna leave that like that. We're gonna do those two. I am gonna do my decanter, same thing. Hopefully I'm stamping that straight. That's gonna be on our little base piece there. 
One other thing I did want to bring out for this one, this is one of the stitched rectangles and I just did that because I thought it would be really fun to do it for the greeting. So I'm going to do sending you an old fashioned birthday card. And I'm going to just try my very best to center that, which looks pretty good. And I'm going to, and I should have grabbed a little scrap, but that's okay. I'll stamp here. I'm going to just stamp the little twist on there. Let me try one more because I don't want it full strength. We'll just kind of stamp the twist. So we have our little twist. I'm going to go ahead and take my sponge and sponge the edge of this while I'm at it. Okay, same thing for this. Okay, and I'm going to do one more. Let me just move this over just a smidge. So I have my blender pen. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Now this one is a little bit, it's not terrific. Oh, this one is a little bit dry. I might have to grab another one. This one is a little bit more wet because I'm doing the ink a little faster. So we may get a slightly better blend. And if you want it just a little bit darker, you can kind of dip into your ink pad. Now that was early espresso, so that was probably just a little bit dark, darker than I wanted, but it's still lightening up pretty well. Okay, just like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my shimmer pen and I'm gonna do the glass just a little bit on the top. I don't want too much because I don't really want to bring too much of the color in, but I kind of want just a little bit of a sparkle, just a little bit, which is why I brought just a little bit of extra color in with my blender pen on the bottom there, okay? All right, so this is scrap. Let me move this over, move this over. I'm trying to just wipe these off only because I'm afraid if I don't, I'm gonna have a mishap. And I think like this one I already did. Okay, so we're gonna bring something else in here. So for a minute, I'm gonna close up my ink pads. So again, I'm still gonna keep these out because I do want them. But let me scoot a couple of these things out of the way. Move my stamps over. Because now what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna bring in our die cutting machine, which you can also emboss with. So we're gonna take our old world folder. I think it's called old world map. I'm gonna put this in here. And we're lining this up at the line to kind of ensure that it's even. So I am still using my Big Shot. So if you have that, you're gonna use an original base plate and you're gonna use the blue plate if you have any of these 3D folders. So I'm just gonna crank that through. And I'm gonna keep this handy because we're probably gonna use this again. I did try to do the die cutting ahead of time so that would kind of limit it a little bit. So we have this. Now one other thing to notice, when you, when you emboss, if you're embossing with the Stampin' Up logo facing up, you're gonna get a depressed image. So if you wanted it to be the other way where it sticks up, you're gonna just wanna put your image in this way. So you're gonna wanna put it looking up to you this way if you want it to stick up. If you want it to go down, then you're gonna put it with the Stampin' Up face up. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So then I'm gonna bring my espresso back in and I'm gonna really kind of sponge the edges of this. I don't really want it to be roughed up, but I want it to just have a little bit of a, a kind of a old look. And then I'm gonna take my sponge, I didn't re-ink, and I'm just gonna kind of go over a couple spots just lightly. I don't want to be too dark that I get a really, really dark spot. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now for this one, we're going to go ahead and put this together. So if you remember, we also have this little piece and I'm actually going to trim, um, I think I'm going to trim a little bit of this off. I want to make it so it's just a little bit thinner, but I'm not really 100% sure how thin yet. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my base card. So same thing, early espresso. So we're just going to kind of take a look at this where we have it. We have that layered. If we put this here and then we have our whiskey. Actually, I think I'm not going to cut it down too, too much. So I'm going to take, this is, I believe, four, three by four, 
four by three. Yep, it is. So I'm going to make this two. And with this piece, what you could do is you could even add this to the inside of your card, you know, and just put a little strip on the bottom. So you could still use that little piece for the rest of your card. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Same thing again. I'm going to use liquid glue. Only reason I really like to use liquid glue is especially when you have something that's embossed that has a lot of um, kind of ups and down pieces to it. You want to try to make sure that if you emboss it, you use a liquid glue because it'll grab into those little bumps and hold better. All right, so there's that. And then I'm going to do the same with this. And I'm actually going to sponge the edge of this just a little bit. It doesn't have a whole lot of ink on there, but just to get that cut edge. So I'm going to put some glue here. Same thing, kind of center this. I'll put him up here and this guy down here at the bottom. Now you can do this on dimensionals as well. I'm going to put the sentiment flat down and then I will put this up on dimensionals again. almost there. I'm so sorry. I think what I'm going to have to do from now on is just hide all these mini dimensionals and make sure I have a huge stack. But clearly I must have really gotten dimensional happy because I have never had this little dimensionals anywhere near me before. <laughs> okay, so there is card number two. So really not too different. We went from pretty simple. We really didn't do anything except add a little bit of color there. We added some, um, we added a folder, some sponging, a little piece of the memories and more kind of as a fill in DSP. So there are those two. So then we're going to move on to number three. Now for number three, I hope you guys are going to think this is pretty fun. So what I did was, and I stamped this ahead of time, this is called masking paper. So basically this is kind of like making a little sticker and I stamped this just so it would be dry, but this is just the glass. And what we're going to do is we're going to stamp our glass kind of where we want and I'm actually going to make this a little bit darker only because this is a dark paper so this is another piece from the memories and more you can see the other side there so what we're going to do is we're going to make this so it's kind of like a multi-layer image so I'm going to ink my glass and kind of put it where I want it I did it in espresso okay so that looks pretty good I'm going to leave this sit just for a minute and in the meantime, we're going to just do the same thing with our background again. And the reason being is I want to really let this dry because we're going to stick something onto it. So I don't want it to be kind of wonky and end up taking off color. So we'll do the same thing, just randomly stamping our glasses. Okay. And once again with the twist. good okay so we have that now you also can go ahead and do your same thing with adding your sentiment but since this one already has one on I'm gonna leave that one you could trim it off if you like but I kind of like the way it is so I'm gonna close this up just for the sake of not making a mess I am gonna keep it out though because same thing we're gonna do again we're going to sponge and do after we do our embossing so once more, now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I mean. So if you want it to be raised, and I'm still going to kind of use this line to line up my, my paper just to make sure it's straight, but we're going to line it up this way. We're going to fold this down. So now instead of the ridges going down, they're going to actually stick up. Okay. So I'm going to grab my die cutting machine once more. Crank it through. And you will see that instead you're going to have a raised image here. Okay, so I'll show you when I sponge this. Just letting that finish drying just a little bit. 
So same thing, I'm going to just sponge the edges. And then just kind of go a little bit all over this. And you can see the difference, and I'll hold this up in just a second. But you can see the difference between these two cards because this one has depressed images and then this one has raised images. So you can see it does give you a different look, okay? All right, so I feel pretty confident that this is dry enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel the back of this off. So it's just a little sticker. And I feel like Stampin' Up! does carry this now, but if not, you can also get this from Amazon or Simon, Simon Says Stamp. It's just basically um, masking paper. You could also use a post-it note. And I'm really, I did cut this a tiny bit um, shy because I wanted to cut close to the border that way we wouldn't have like an overlapping white line. So I want to make sure because we're going to be stamping the decanter on this side that if I err on the side of having an overlap that it is more over here because there's not going to be anything stamped on this side. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my decanter again and the early espresso and I'm going to ink this up. Okay, and I'm going to stamp this here, just trying to get it centered for the most part. Perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my soft suede because I'm going to do a little bit of this with the blender pen and then I also still have my shimmer pen. So what you're going to do is you can kind of pull this with your fingernail and lift it up. You could use this again and again, but now it gives you the illusion that the glass is in front of the decanter. So it's pretty cool. So what I do is I just take this little sticker and I will stick it on the inside. That way I have it to use for another time. So I'm going to make sure I have the wet side here. And actually, you know what? I'm going to grab a different one because I feel like that one's getting just a little dry yeah so I'm gonna take my soft suede and I'm gonna just bring in a little bit more color here I'm gonna try to kind of leave my ice cubes I don't want to say clear but I want to try to leave them so they're not really this color I'm going in for them the very very last let me make sure I get the top of my water uh, beverage I shouldn't say water get the top of my beverage too just because I want it to be fully looking like it's colored now the the early espresso because that is what we inked and it is still a little bit wet it is pulling in from this so it's giving it a different color so if you really wanted to do this and you wanted it to look a certain way you could also use um, memento and then you wouldn't have to worry about it bleeding once it's dry, it wouldn't bleed at all. So I'm going to bring a little bit of color down here to the bottom of the glass, kind of like that reflection. And then I'm going to go super, super, super light across the ice cubes. Just so they're really significantly lighter than anything else in there. Because they typically are. Okay, so there's that. Now, the same thing, you do want to be careful when you're using your shimmer pen because it is going to activate your ink. So if that is something you're worried about, just try to be super light. You can kind of stay inside. Almost gives you the, like that hue that there's something in the glass, you know, that kind of colors it. So I'm trying to stay in the middle so as not to, I'm just wiping off on here, as you can see, just to kind of keep it a little bit lighter. Okay, so that is it. Move these over. And we're going to put this one together. This one's really pretty simple, too, quite honestly. It does have a little bit more to it, but really what probably was a little bit quicker than that other one. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add some liquid glue. Notice there's a dimensional in there, but it's just going to have to stay. Put that there. All right, and then with this one, I'm actually going to pop this up because we don't have a sentiment. So we'll just do a couple here and there for this one. Uh, I apologize if this is annoying. I really am sorry. <laughs> Me with these mini dimensionals. This is kind of like, uh, I don't know if any of you remember this, but I remember my mom used to sing 
a song and I'm not going to get into it because it's kind of a gross song but me without my spoon I got a straw so me without my big dimensionals I got these little mini stinkers but whenever I think about my mom she used to sing that song a lot it always made me laugh <laughs> great green gobs okay so we got that make sure that dimensionals off and we'll put that could give this to somebody for like a congratulations card which is kind of sad that they only have two of these little cards in there because they do end up being absolutely adorable so there we go again so there's cards one two and three so now we're going to move on to our final card now for this card we're just doing a little bit more popping so i do have the um double sided foam strips so these are new to stampin up they have uh, release paper on both sides so that makes them stick up so that's really really cool so what we're going to do we're not going to do a background but we're going to stamp with this so this is a larger piece now you could use this size as well i am actually going to change the orientation of this only because the way this map goes it goes this direction so i do need to trim this up just a smidge and if i'm not mistaken i feel like this is six inches so i'm just going to take so we have two i'm going to take off an inch and a half see if that looks two inches would be six to four we don't want that no we want to take off six to four will be five and we'll take off a quarter let's see if that looks okay it's a little bit small but we'll make it work and then you could use this piece for the inside if you wanted to normally I would have my other trimmer handy which is why I do wish that trimmer was a little bit better bigger but what are you going to do I also have a little piece of um, this is actually the brass foil I believe it's the brass foil that I had already embossed this was a piece that's been sitting on my desk for a super long time and I just never got around to using it so I also have that other stitched rectangle for my sentiment so we have a different one we could do this sentiment with the straight up but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp that part first and I'm going to go with early espresso so straight up, you're the best. Okay, and if you wanted to, I'm gonna do these with a little bit lighter of an ink. You could do soft suede, and I'm gonna cut this out anyway, so. So we have that piece there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sponge this. Okay, so there's that. Then I'm going to stamp, let me move this over. I'm going to stamp my decanter and my glass. And I'm actually going to do um, soft suede because I did like it was a little bit lighter. So I'm going to stamp that and I'm going to stamp my glass. Now I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I am doing a little bit of fussy cutting for this one. So if that's not your thing, you could totally skip this, but I think in this case, it's really gonna make it worth it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut this out. And I'm gonna kind of cut this. I'm not cutting it super close yet, and you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna move these over. And then I'm going to just pull this back and I'm going to stick this on here. It's going to be my foam strip and I'm just going to cut right along here for now. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my glass. So I'm just lifting this up, kind of trying to stick a little bit close to the edge if I can. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this right along the edge because we will now have our foam adhesive and our glass trimmed all at once. We only have to trim it one time and it will already have the piece. So instead of me having to painfully stick 8,000 little mini dimensionals on this, this worked out really well. All right, so there's one. We're gonna do the same thing with our decanter. Now that I think about it, I think what you put in a snifter is brandy. I've had a little bit more time to sit here and think about it. So we're going to just cut this out best you can. If fussy cutting isn't your thing, you could also certainly use if you might be fortunate enough to have a um, brother scan and cut or 
something to something to that effect you could use that as well and then just put it onto your foam or you could use adhesive or dimensionals at that point as well so this would be a tiny bit easier to cut if you don't have the foam on it already but kind of up to you I apologize with this uh, microphone that I'm wearing, which I have gotten amazing feedback. So thank you so much for giving me some feedback on that. The only thing is the way it's set up, sometimes it makes me pull on the camera a little bit. So it's just gonna take a little practice. I've only used it for about four days. Okay, so there are our two pieces that are cut out. So we're gonna just pull all of the rest of this. I'm gonna move all these little dimensionals and everything out of the way. And this will be our final card that we're going to put together. So I am going to, just because I have this out and it's simple, oops, got a little something stuck there. I'm going to sponge the edge of this. You could also, if you wanted to, run this through the old world folder. That's another idea, but since this video is getting just a teeny bit longer than what I've been shooting for, I don't want to make it take too, too long. So you could emboss this if you wanted to, but I think with both of these together, if you did, you should do one so you have the bumps out and one so you have the bumps in. So just my two cents. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the same thing again with my blender pen. And I'm going to blend this in. And again, this is the lighter color this time. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of soft suede ink. And remember this, this is a tip for you from me. When you're starting with something and you have a whole lot of ink, you probably more than likely want to start to the bottom because that will tend to be the darker spot and not the top because if you have a really dark top to your liquor, you might not want to be drinking it. Maybe something is brewing in there that you don't necessarily want. And I'm going to do one other thing that looks pretty good okay I'm gonna do one more thing and just because I'm just trying this just for the heck of it I'm actually gonna bring in my seaside spray and I'm gonna take a shot at making these ice cubes a little bit bluer and then bring in the brown there we go that looks pretty good actually especially the one on the top because you know that's like an iceberg above the water and see it a little bit clearer so there is that and you do want to make sure when you use your blender pens that you clean them off afterwards you wipe them on paper until they run clear and they are totally usable for many many times I'm I have my uh, my glitter pen here just gonna add a little bit to the glass portion again I'm trying to kind of stick just in the middle so it's giving a little bit of shimmer without really blending that color in there as much okay so now one other thing you could do and this is going to all come down to personal preference so this is a pretty light image so if you don't want to do this you don't have to but I'm going to show you and that way you can decide whether or not you do or don't like it but I'm going to take a dark crumb cake stamp and blend and I'm going to just run along the edge here just to kind of darken my foam a little bit. I don't really want it dark dark but it kind of just takes that super bright white edge off of it. So there's one and then if you don't like that you could skip that part completely. I see a couple little pieces where I probably could have trimmed just a little bit better. Might have to do a teeny bit of doctoring real quick before we finish. So just using the side of your blend will ensure that it sticks to that really nicely. Let me see, right here. Okay, that's good. All right, so now we're just going to put our card together. So we have our base layer. Put down our memories and more. And I'm going to just off-center this. And then that way, when I put this one down, we'll all center this to the other side. So if you ever have something where you didn't exactly cut it and you're out of whatever it is you're doing or whatever the case may be, you can kind of off center it because it kind of gives you that little artsy look. 
Be very careful when you have glue on your fingers if you're touching foil because it will give it a sticky look and it, you can't get it off. It's kind of hard to, to remove. So we have this and this here and we have our sentiment. So I think I'm gonna put my sentiment flat down because we have our little glasses popped up. And I'm gonna add this. You are gonna wanna hold this for a second because it's gonna need to stick to that foil. And probably on second thought, you really don't have to add the, the seaside spray, but I think it kind of looks nice. So just peel the back off and you have these instant pop-up stickers, which is really awesome. And even if you wanted to, you could have stamped your little wooden panel onto a lighter piece of cardstock and sat it under there so it has something to sit on. But again, those are kind of the things where that's why I like making these cards with you instead of preparing everything ahead of time because it kind of makes me think of different things that I might have changed if I were not doing this as I go. A lot of times when I'll do things as I go, I'll kind of think of ideas like, for example, the blender pen. That hadn't really been in my plan at all. Uh, also with using the Stampin' Blend to color in these little cutout pieces, that's another thing that just as I was going along, I kind of thought of an idea for that. So. I hope you guys have enjoyed this today. I think it's a lot of fun. I think any guy that'll get any of these cards is gonna be super happy to receive them. Again, we did just use pretty much two colors, soft suede and early espresso. So I'm just gonna show you one more time. That was card number one, number two, number three, and number four. We did add a little bit of foil. We did a little bit of ease with the memories and more card. I think that really made a lot of these a lot simpler and might also maybe help you to use some of the products that you might not otherwise use. Because if we're being honest, I get the memories and more cards a lot. And sometimes I forget to use them until basically the set is retiring and I'm thinking, well, now what? I didn't use them at all. <laughs> so you can also remember those little bits that you might have left over. You could add these to your inside card panel. So you could cut this in half and just have a uh, about a half inch piece for each one to put on the inside. That way you have something to add to your inside vanilla layer. Thank you guys so very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, you might as well turn on the bell. There's a little icon here that will tell you every time I make a new video, if I'm live or if I share anything here on YouTube. Again, I do appreciate all of your comments. If you have anything that you'd like to get, I would love for you to shop in my online store, which is reachthestamper.stampinup.net. I do read each and every comment and respond to them here on YouTube. And I don't get quite as many comments here. So this is a great place if you have a question you wanted to have it answered. This is a great place to leave a comment. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on my Fast to Fabulous Friday. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you again real soon.